a tearjerker. I was about to go off camera, but you know, I realized I had to present next or introduce our next presenter. So here I am back. But what a lovely testament to the program. I, I love what Darren said about it's not it's a program for men too, for fathers. I think if you look at the work that we've been doing the last year in the consortium, but also making thoughtful decisions about including partners, uh, fathers, engagement tools, and so on and so forth, this was just a testament that this program um, is for the family unit. It's for a parent. It's for a caregiver. And it works. So with that, uh, I am excited to announce our next presenters. Um, this presentation is a hit every single year. I'd like to introduce Delisa Young, Manager of Data and Evaluation at LABBN, and Monica Charles, Senior Data Analyst. They'll be talking um, through a presentation called Data in Action, How Your Data Impacts Our Stronger Families. Delisa and Monica, it is all you. Thank you. Great, thank you for that introduction. Great, we have our slides. So as Shola would have stated, let's go, let's, let's get into it. So um, I know there is a lot of text on the slide, on the next slide. Thank you. So a lot of text on the slide and it's not PowerPoint best practices, uh, but this story I'm gonna share really encapsulates the work that you all do. And it was worth the text heavy slide. Uh, we are going to walk through data on the upcoming slides, but, but these are the stories, and you know, as you can see, we love a good story uh, behind the data that can easily get missed if we are not intentional about highlighting client and staff stories. Um, so this particular story was submitted to LABBN by one of our sites. So I'm going to read through it for you. So a client, they were getting ready to complete five years in the program, and the home visitor asked, is there anything else before we end our visit? The client then said, yes, actually there is. The client went on to share that an alarm in the home had been going off, and at times she was smelling gas. She brought it up to the apartment manager, but nothing was done about it. The home visitor named um, carbon monoxide exposure symptoms and asked if she had any. The client shared feeling dizzy the last few days. The home visitor then walked the client through how to reset the carbon monoxide alarm and then change the batteries, but nothing worked. As a certified emergency response trainer, the home visitor recognized the danger of the situation. The home visitor provided the emergency phone line for the gas company and the information the client needed to share. The client called back in less than 20 minutes Someone from the gas company had arrived and did in fact find a carbon monoxide leak. The home visitor's immediate action and guidance was crucial in helping the family learn about the danger they were in and how to get support. The home visitor also shared where to call to report the apartment manager's negligence for dismissing the situation. And finally, she shared a resource about how long they would be, they could be without gas. So this home visitor listened, took action, equipped the client and showed immense care for the family and their safety. And this is what you do. This is what this network is about. So we are always excited when you submit these stories, we read them and we're happy to be able to highlight this one. So now we're gonna get ready to transition into viewing some data. And I will say that you are going to see that the data reflects many of your observations about the impact of the pandemic on our network. We know that the workforce has been impacted with many leaving their jobs or relocating out of Los Angeles County. Uh, many hospitals have reported lower census and unique to our network, one of our funders did transition into a different data system um, during the fiscal year. And so um, some of those numbers are just not gonna be captured during this presentation. So keep that in mind. And um, we haven't quite finished out the fiscal year. So um, some of our numbers will look different at the end of the fiscal year, but um, there's all the variety of factors um, that play into you know, how our network has been impacted. And you'll see that as we're looking at the enrollment and visit count numbers within our network. Okay, so now, we're looking at FamilySERV. We're going to start off here. We're looking at FamilySERV. 
And this chart shows the number of prenatal enrollments over time. So we do see a decrease in prenatal enrollments. Uh, many of the factors that I just mentioned may be contributing factors. Um, also, we have heard that uh, providers such as clinics, they are short staffed at this time and they're adapting as well and have other priorities, making it challenging at times to outreach to these providers, which is a primary source for our prenatal enrollments. However, in spite of the lower counts of prenatal enrollments, the good news is that we have seen an increase over the past two years in the prenatal enrollment rate. So that means of the number of clients who were outreached to, we're seeing that more of them are enrolling. So that percentage has increased. And this could be for a number of reasons, but I do wanna note that um, we have heard from the outreach staff that they are able to engage clients more helping them prepare for their visits and really strengthening that warm handoff to their home visitors. So those could be factors why we see an increase in the prenatal enrollment rate. So that's excellent news. And we have listed the sites that have seen the most improvement in their prenatal enrollments from last year. And those sites include uh, Centinella Hospital, Martin Luther King Hospital, Providence Holy Cross, and uh, Shields for Families, the PAT program. So congratulations to you all. Okay, next slide. So this data here is looking at, so of the number of clients who are available to be approached at the hospital, what percentage were actually approached? So we do see a decrease in the approach rate this year. And um, keeping in mind that we have seen a lot of staff turnover, a lot of hospital liaisons who either gone on leave or um, you know, left the program for um, could be a variety of reasons. And then uh, also some of the hospitals are, we have reported lower census. So the number at the, the very bottom of each of those bars re represents the total number of clients that were actually approached. And so it is lower this year and of course will impact enrollment. So that gives you some context for um, data on future slides here. Next slide. Okay, so here we're looking at hospital enrollments. So knowing that there were not as many clients available to approach, it makes sense that we are seeing lower enrollment counts this year. Um, however, in spite of the lower enrollments and in, in the counts itself, the enrollment rate, so those of uh, those uh, clients who were approached, how many actually enrolled, we are, we are not seeing a difference in the, the rate from last year to this year. So that's, that's good news. And that's about 65% of, of clients who actually end up enrolling in um, our programs. And then um, we wanna give a shout out to the sites who've seen the most improvement. Many sites have improved, but we're highlighting the ones we've seen the most improvement in and their enrollment rate, or they have consistently been high in their enrollment rate. And those sites are Martin Luther King Hospital, St. Francis Medical Center, and Emanate Hospital. So congratulations to you all. Okay, next slide. Okay, so here we're looking at um, home visiting enrollment, postpartum enrollments. So we are viewing um, the hospital, I mean, the home visiting postpartum enrollments. And similarly to the welcome baby prenatal enrollments, um, outreach efforts in general are impacted uh, by like what I mentioned before, changes in the provider structure, new staffing, um, and which is a big source of referrals even into the home visiting postpartum programs. Uh, we do see a decrease in enrollments into home visiting for the reasons that I mentioned. And also uh, one of our funders did transition out of our data system. So um, there are more referrals um, enrollments that are not reflected here. And um, just kind of a side note, we did notice that, um, you know, in light of a racial equity that um, our African-American clients are more likely to enroll into the program when they're outreach to, as opposed to at the hospital. Um, so for home visiting, the number of African-American clients um, we see a larger increase or a larger number there. So there is something to say about being able to outreach and maybe do targeted recruitment and outreach for our African-American clients. 
And then we have two sites listed here in which we've seen the most improvement in their postpartum enrollments. And um, those sites are Children's Institute, Inc. and Richstone Family Centers. Congratulations to you two. Okay, next slide. Okay, so this chart, this chart shows the number of completed visits over time by Welcome Baby and home visiting. Um, so this trend is no surprise at this point, considering the factors that have been mentioned. However, there's still a great number of visits that are being completed. So over 60,000, that's a lot. So we applaud your hard work. Congratulations to all the hard work you're doing and taking on extra cases and just really shifting um, during this pandemic, continuing to stay in there. So thank you all. Now I'm gonna pass it over to Monica. Thank you, Delisa. All right, so we'll start off by talking about some family demographics. So to paint a picture of the families we serve, we'll start off by looking at age of caregiver at time of enrollment. So over on the right, you'll see uh, the distribution of age of caregiver and the average age of entry is 29 years old. Next slide. The race ethnicity of our client population this fiscal year is fairly consistent with past years. So three quarters of caregivers identify as Latinx, 9% identify as Black or African American, 7% identify as white, 5% identify as Asian, and another 5% identify as another race ethnicity. And that other category includes smaller percentages of clients who identify as Alaska Native, American Indian, Middle Eastern, Pacific Islander, and multiracial. Next slide. Okay, so now we're gonna move into talking about program impact. So we'll start off by discussing caregiver depression screening. So to avoid potential negative impact on caregiver and baby's livelihood, it is crucial to identify uh, caregiver depressive symptoms early on. This way they can be linked to services. So we focused in on two key screening time points. The chart on the left highlights the percentage of caregivers screened during their prenatal period. And the chart on the right highlights the percentage of caregivers screened within three months of childbirth. And you'll see that our programs consistently do an excellent job with screening for depression during both of these periods. And also notably in LA County, Black and Latinx mothers experience prenatal and postpartum depression at higher rates compared to other race ethnicities. And so considering our network service population, these screenings become even more significant. Next slide. Using the ages and stages questionnaire, our programs also continue to screen for child developmental delays at a high rate, especially when comparing to the state rate. And the emphasis that our programs place on these child screeners mean that families are more likely to receive the services needed to mitigate potential delays early on. Next slide. This is a new one. So another outcome to highlight early on in child's life is safe sleeping. Sudden infant death syndrome is a leading cause of death in infants between one month and one year of age. And a main prevention strategy to reduce the risk of SIDS is to always place baby to sleep on their back. Most SIDS deaths occur between two and four months of age. So here we focused on the two month time point. So in our programs, the home visitors provide families with safe sleeping education so that families are aware of this best practice to always put baby to sleep on their back. By the time the child is two months of age, nearly 90% of HFA, HFA and PAT families and nearly 100% of welcome baby families have received that safe sleep education from their home visitor. And then over on the right, you'll see this information sharing is effective. At the two-month visit, 92% of HFA and PAP families and 97% of welcome baby families stated that they put baby to sleep on their back. And this is extra impressive in the context of the comparable LA County rate of 82%. I'll pass it over to Delisa, who will continue to highlight program impact. 
Great, thank you, Monica. So now looking more at our, the impact of our program, um, well child visits or checkups. These are critical because children are being assessed for physical, emotional, and social development at every stage of life. The, the chart shows the percentage of clients that have at least six well child visits by 15 months. Um, this is a HEDIS measure that's used by um, many healthcare plans. Um, since our Welcome Baby program only goes to nine months, we projected how many children are on track to having six well child visits by 15 months. And we did that based on how many children have completed the recommended number of visits by nine months. So those we consider being on track to having those six visits by the time they reach uh, 15 months. So you can see how our sites compare to insurance plans. Our home visiting program is at 82% of children receiving their well child visits and the welcome baby program we project to be at 96%. And this is great when we compare to these insurance plans, uh, particularly with uh, Medicaid HMO being more comparable to our client population. So our sites are doing a great job ensuring that clients attend these visits. Next slide. Timely and adequate postpartum care can set the stage for the long-term health and well-being of, um, of new clients, their, their mothers and infants. This is very important for prevention and identifying immediate health risks. It's also a HEDIS measure. So we have some comparison data. So you see here that the chart shows the percentage of clients who attended the six week postpartum visit compared to insurance plans. So once again, our sites do a great job ensuring that clients attend these critical visits. I know that you all are reminding clients of uh, their, their visits, helping them set up appointments, checking in with them if you attend your visit, and this shows. And the sites that are listed um, have 90% uh, or more of their clients uh, who reported attending this particular visit. And these sites include Providence Little Company of Mary, Miller Children's Hospital, Maternal Child Health Access, the Whole Child, Plaza Community Services, and Wellnest. So congratulations to those sites. Over 90% of clients attending visits. That's great. Okay, next slide. So this, shot, this slide shows the number of community referrals that were accessed by clients and shows the top needs for welcome baby and home visiting. And we see that there were um, 15,467 successful referrals, and that's about 1,000 more referrals than last year. So even though, just looking at the top needs, even though home visiting is a more intensive program than Welcome Baby, our clients essentially had the same needs this fiscal year. Um, however, food needs um, is still a top need for a home visiting program, whereas lactation support was for Welcome Baby. And um, just for some context, the charitable services, that category includes like furniture, clothing, baby supplies. So those essential, um, those essential basic needs are still a top priority for all of our clients. Next slide. So this year we wanted to highlight the many goals that clients accomplished. Home visitors, they check in with clients about goals that they want to accomplish. Um, and the word cloud you see contains a snapshot of some of the words associated with goals that clients wanted to accomplish. So you, you can see the word attend. So we talked a lot about those visits that are critical, setting appointments, developing growth, those types of, those are some of the needs and the goals identified by clients. And um, the home visitors, you all encourage the clients to identify short and long-term long goals. And then a plan is written and documented in the database. So we see that um, over 13,000 goals were completed this fiscal year. That is amazing. Okay, next slide. Okay, so once again, we have a slide that is heavy on the text, but it is a story and uh, we had to share this story. So I'm gonna read through it. An 18 year old single mom to a 10 month old lives at home with her parents. 
When she enrolled into the program, she was not sure she would finish high school as having a new baby was challenging for her. A home visitor discussed the client's goals with her and then and put them into writing. The client stated that she wanted to graduate high school and then get a job to have her own income. Essential materials donated by the agency were provided to the client to help with her schooling. The client successfully graduated high school. The client began to research jobs she can do from home and came across making her own lip glosses. She shared her idea with a home visitor and they wrote down her new goal, which was to make lip glosses and sell them online. It has been a successful small business and it has inspired the client to make more goals. The client shared that she would like to buy her own home and enrolled herself in some real estate classes. Currently, the client is attending real estate classes, seminars, and is thankful that her home visitor has encouraged her to make goals. The client has demonstrated her strengths and dedication to obtaining her goals and has been committed to her visits. She stated that she is able to talk to her home visitor about her goals because her ideas are supported. So, wow, this is another story that one of the sites submitted to us. And this story highlights how the home visitor helped empower the client to set goals for anything that the client wants to accomplish. It's a great reminder that our program supports and builds self-efficacy in our clients. And there are long-term effects of the program that will carry on with our clients um, even after they complete the program. So now I'm gonna turn it back over to Monica who is going to close out the presentation. Thank you, Delisa. I love that story. Uh, so let's look at some program completion trends. So welcome baby graduations this fiscal year are following kind of similar trends as the enrollment and visit counts. But that being said, there are many sites who have continued to improve their retention and program completion rates. So special shout out to Sentinella, Maternal Child Health Access, and Providence Holy Cross, who saw notable increases in their program completion rates when comparing to last year. Next slide. We look at HFA and PAT program completion a little differently. These are long-term programs, so retention is a key focus. In HFA and PAT, there are over 600 families who have been enrolled for two plus years. This number climbs every year. And let's celebrate the 100 HFA and PAT families who completed their long-term programs this fiscal year. And both of these metrics really demonstrate that strong bond between family and home visitor. Next slide. And lastly, we will highlight a couple of results from the Welcome Baby Client Satisfaction Survey this fiscal year. So to start off, when asked to rank the statement, my home visitor provides information or support in a way that respects my beliefs, clients rated an average of 4.8 out of 5. And this high rating really speaks to our network trainings and emphasis on cultural competency. And then second, when asked to read the statement, my home visitor helped me build confidence as a parent, clients rated an average of 4.7 out of 5. And this journey of building confidence and self-efficacy is illustrated in stories like the one that Delisa just shared and the stories that we've been hearing today so far. Families are achieving goals with support from their home visitors. Next slide. And then before we close it out, we just want to thank our wonderful teammates who helped put together this presentation. Thank you. We couldn't have done it without you. And also on that note, a huge virtual round of applause to all of you who have provided the services and entered the data that we just presented. We applaud this network for standing strong with families. And that concludes our presentation. Excellent. Thank you, Delisa and Monica, for sharing that data presentation. It's, it's so exciting to see the work of our network in that form. So I hope everybody really enjoyed um, seeing all the accomplishments that everybody in our network have made. Um, thank you for sharing that with us. We are going to do a Mentimeter to see how people react. So if, um, I'll have you, the two of you stay um, on our screen here while we, while we respond. So 
Um, okay, back to your phones or your browsers, everybody. And um, same code for the Mentimeter, but I'm going to change the slide to um, get some reactions from the, for the data team. So now that you've seen this great presentation and you saw what um, the network is doing, what do you want to say to your peers and colleagues in home visiting? What, what things would you like to tell them? Okay, we're coming in now. We've got, you make a difference. You are amazing. Awesome. Great job. Keep on keeping on. We can do it one day at a time. You're making an impact. You're valued. Keep up the great work. Keep pushing forward. It's moving so fast. What you do matters. That's a great one. You are appreciated. You are important. You inspire. You're valued. You are great. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. This is um, this is really cool to see, and it's still coming in. Um, I think we all have a lot of things that we can say to our colleagues, so I encourage you to continue the um, the good words and thank yous to all of the colleagues in your your organizations as well. One more question: um, After looking through the the data presentation and seeing what other um, groups are achieving and um, how we're succeeding and changing over the years. What are your goals? What are your programmatic goals for next fiscal year? We're ending our fiscal year um, at the end of this month and we're moving into new years. So it's a great time to make some goals. What, what are your goals for um, continuing into the next year? Okay, we got client retention, in more visits, increase enrollment, meeting the visits, having people come to the visits, increase outreach and make home visiting known, definitely. And I think our home visiting day is helping with that for sure, but can, we can continue to make it more known because look at how great it is, right? Um, focus on retention, keep getting stronger, be better, increase support, increase all numbers, support staff. The audits are important, they keep us on track. So checking in on our data, making sure we're on track with what we're looking at and what we're hoping to achieve, meeting numbers, staff retention, do some in-person visits. How cool is that to hear that we might be able to do some in-person visits this next year? Increase enrollment, outreach to new clients. Yeah, spread the word, definitely. Have better support and father engagement, client retention. And the list goes on and on. Continue resilience within our families and ourselves. These are awesome. Thank you, everyone. Um, great goals. I hope that you um, remember this slide when you're thinking through what you're hoping to get done next year. We will share this out too. Um, all the Mentimeter responses we'll share out so that you can see what everybody's goals and um, hopes are for the next year. So I'll leave this one up while we move into our, um, our next part of the agenda. But I'm going to take this take the screen down, but the Mentimeter will be open so you can continue to add your goals if you'd like. All right. Thank you, Delisa and Monica, once again for the great presentation. Really appreciate all the work that you do to put that together for us. So thank you.